So over the course of the past uh, n lectures or so, uh, we have been digging deep into the world of uh, uh, functional patterns and functional uh, abstractions. And we have looked at the functor, the uh, applicative functor, the monad, the monoid, and we also looked a little bit at the monoid homomorphism. And these are all really important patterns which occur naturally when we program. And it doesn't matter really if you program in F sharp or Haskell in a functional language or in C++ or in Python. These patterns occur naturally in our codes. And this is important. Because, if, because what we really need to learn is to recognize these patterns and see them and, and so, that we can, so that we can see them and then put them to use. And um, functional programming makes this a lot easier uh, than, than typically other types of languages. And, um, and the reason why we want to do this is, because, is that these patterns allow us to abstract away all the noise and, and let us focus on the core of the problem. So for example, the functor pattern uh, allows us to to transform a structure, like a list loop over a list or a loop over a tree, but we don't really know, have to know anything about the details of, of, the, of the tree, how it's implemented or anything. We can just focus in, on doing the transformation. And, and this is really the power of it, because now by doing this, our codes become, more, uh, become shorter, easier to understand, more flexible, and we get a lot less bugs. And we don't have to repeat ourselves because we can just leave, um, leave the, the heavy lifting to a generic implementation that has already been, been done by somebody else and checked and triple checked. So this is super important, regardless of what language you are working in. Now, um, in this lecture, we will now meet our final uh, final pattern, final abstraction, the traversable. And when I say final, this, that doesn't mean that this is like now we've covered all of them. There's tons and tons and tons more to, to learn. But for this particular course, we will just conclude here. And, and the traversable is, a, is an amazing pattern, ultra powerful. And it combines everything we have learned so far. It, it re relies on the functor, it relies on the applicative functor, it, can, it can rely on the monad as well, uh, on the monoid, and even monoid homomorphisms go into this thing. So this is quite a, quite a soup. And, and, and once we have like the traversable under our belt, it will, can give us really superpowers. But before we start looking at the sort of gory details of the traversable, um, I think it's best to, to show an example of what this is about, because the traversable isn't very difficult really. But if one just looks at the type signatures, it can sort of be a little bit confusing. So I think the best thing is to just, we're going to look at an example and see how that, how that particular pattern arises when we are doing uh, real life programming. And then we can see how we can implement uh, a special case of the traversable instead of doing the fully gener general one. So, um, a typical thing that can happen when we are, are, um, are doing some work is, is that, that, for example, let's suppose I have a function f. And f takes some a and produces an option of b, some b, right? So now I have a function which can fail, and, and then I have a list of a's. And, uh, so to, and, and then I want to apply f to all of those. So if I do a list.map uh, f on a list of a1, a2, and so on to a n, I have a bunch of these, uh, these values, and I want to apply f to all of them. So what I will get then is a back is a list of op option of a1, well, uh, sorry, b1, and to option 
of B n. So now I have a list of option of B. And that, that might be exactly what we want. Uh, perfectly good thing. Um, but, but now we know that, okay, this list contains stuff that might have failed. So some of these computations might have failed. And that might be okay. Like, depending on your problem, what you can look at, you can say, okay, now I have this list. Um, all I want to do is just, I want to just filter over this list, get rid of anything that has failed, all the nothings, and, um, and then just keep the, the values. And, and I, I can extract those values. So then I could just turn this straight into sort of, some op do some operation over this, fold over this thing, and, and then I can and just turn this into some list of, uh, list of Bs, essentially. That might be what you, what you want, depending on your problem. But another option that we have, which is quite common, is that if any of these, maybe a hundred or so operations, one, two, a hundred, many, if any of these fail, then we have a problem and we need to deal with it. And, and basically the whole, the whole computation is void uh, and, and we need to do some, take some action. And so, so what you really want to do is then say, okay, uh, fine, uh, I need to loop over this list and I need to check if any of these are, are, have, are, are nothing. Then I return nothing to say that there was some problem or I throw an exception or whatever I need to do. And if all of them are sum, then I will just collect everything into a list, basically. Uh, so basically what we want to do is we want to change our list of options of B into a option of list of B, right? This is the essence of it. So if anything has failed, this will become nothing. And if all of them are okay, this will become some list of results. And this is the essence and the heart of, uh, of the traversable. So this particular thing is something that we can turn into a function which is called sequence. So a sequence is a function which takes a list, or, or, or takes in this case a list of options of something and turns it into an option of list of something. Now more generally we can write sequence uh, like this. We can say, well, I'm going to have some t, that's um, t for traversable, of an a, I'm going to get to that soon, of an m, and we turn it into a a of t of m. Or yeah, some we can call this. I'm just gonna call it M because it's my. Well, no M. Sorry, I'm going. I'm, I'm ahead of myself. Right. So really, what is going on here is is that we are flipping these two around. But the list is the here on the on the outside, and it will go on in the on the inside. You see. These two have changed places. And here you see T. Right, so what is this T? So this T type here is called a traversable. And the traversable is, is uh, it would be a traversable, it, it's, it's, it's a functor. And it's a foldable. 
we haven't talked about foldable, but foldable is essentially any, any structure that has implemented a fold uh, function. Right? So this thing here is a functor, which means that it defines map, and foldable says that it defines fold. A here, let me get a little bit rid here. A here, that's an applicative functor. So that's an applicative. And the M here is most often we want this thing to be a monoid so that we can collect stuff. It's not strictly necessary to be a monoid, but uh, most often we want this. So now we can see that how, how this is sort of putting everything together. So we have something which is a functor and foldable. We have an applicative functor and a monoid and we can do this and we can do it generically. So we can just write, basically write one sequence function to take care of all of this in a generic way. Right, so let's have a little look at how this would work for this, for this particular case here, that, this example case. But before we do so, uh, I think it might be in place to say, to look at, at, um, at what these pieces are. So, a functor, of course, we know, has a map function. A map takes an A to a B, and it takes some F. F is just not going to be a functor, a generic container. That could be a list or an option or an array or a map or who knows. Of A, and turns it into the same type of container transformed. That was the applicative. Uh, the, the functor. The, the applicative on it, uh, had, it had this function apply, which was very similar. So it says that we have a functor, which contains a function from A to B, and we have a functor from A, and we have a functor to B. So if we have a functor, and we can, uh, we can define this um, this type of, of function apply for it. So we just take a functor and we just say, okay, we need to create a function apply, which has this uh, signature that would have a, a applicative functor. So the only difference is that here we have the functor direct, uh, function directly. Here the function is, the, is wrapped inside of this um, inside of this functor. And this also came with a function which we call pure which just took a normal A and produced a F of A. So in the case of option, of the option type, so if F here is now would be option, then this pure, we could, do, we could implement it like this, that pure equals sum. Because sum is a function which takes some, some value and turns it into an option. So that's easy to implement. And of course, then we could take this apply, and we could uh, we could also define define it as a we defined it as this inline function, so that we could uh, so that we could just use it like an inline operator, which co will come handy now when we start looking at this uh, this example. All right, so let's dig into the implementation because it, it actually turns out to be quite simple. So, to recap a little bit, we had a list of option of some type A. I'm not going to care what that is. And we want to turn this into an option of a list of some type A. So this is the task. And for this we're going to implement the sequence function. Now we do like this. Let it's going to be a recursion. So I'm going to do this quite explicitly so that you can see all the steps. And let rec sequence, and it's going to take some x, where x is going to be in this case now. I'm not going to do this for, for some generic f and a, and we're just going to do it for the list. This is going to be a list of option. Okay, 
So this is here is a traversable, this here is an applicative, and this here should maybe be a monoid, but I don't care. I'm not going to use that property of it. So, and now I will just assume that I have um, I have uh, the all the the map and and apply and everything is defined. So for these things, so I'm gonna ah maybe I should just let I'm just gonna say let this inline operator here equals uh, option dot apply, and then so I'm just gonna make some. Uh, helpers here and pure is sum. All right, so how can we do this thing? Well, all the thing we can do is look at the X, so we can do match X with, and what if it's an empty list? Remember this thing here needs to, to return a option. Of a list. So if I'm, I'm passing in, if I do sequence on an empty list, the only thing I can get sensible I can get out is some empty list, which of course has the type option of list of something. And then comes the interesting case where we do the heavy lifting. So this is now I'm going to do pattern matching on the head of the list, which is a single element which is now going to be of type option. And then there's going to be a tail, which is still a list of option. Now, what should we do about this? Well, we need to produce a option. And now we can do a little cool trick. So I can, I can use this pure. And I'm going to apply pure to the list append operator, the cons operator. Remember, this thing here takes a, an, an A and a list of A to produce a list of A. And now when doing pure, I'm actually putting all of this stuff inside of an option. Which brings us to the to the apply function. So now I did, so now I've lifted this this cons operator into the option world. So all of this stuff here is is now wrapped in an option. This function, and now I can use my apply function, and I can apply it to the head, which is just the uh, yeah which is just some option value. So this is option A. And then I can apply that to, and we can recurse sequence of the tail. And, and that's it. We have just implemented the sequence function for a list. And it doesn't, it, it's really, if we just generalize things and just get rid of the fact that I'm now using option apply and, and, the, and the pure is also for option. If I can just generalize this stuff, this works for any list. And of course, then if I know that this is a foldable, I implement this in terms of fold, I don't even have to know that this is a list. So we have just gotten rid of all the gory details of the structures. Fold will take care of the recursion and applicative will take care of, of, the, of the sort of fl flipping things from the inside to the outside. Flipping these two. It's all done by the applicative. I think this is so beautiful. I get tears in my ears, every, in my <coughs> ears, in my eyes every time I see this. So, um, so that was sequence. So, so let's, let's look at um, another function, which is called traverse. Because sometimes when you do, do this, you, you actually don't want to do this. You want to, to be able to, um, 
to, um, to apply a function at the same time. Since you're already iterating over things, you might want to do a transformation. And that's a function that we call traverse. So I'm just going to write down the signature of traverse here so you can see. It's very similar to sequence. Um, traverse takes some value A and turns it into something which is an applicative of B. So then we have a, a function which takes yeah, some whatever, takes an integer and turns it into an applicative, an option, a list, an async, something. Anything that has an A apply function uh, attached to it. And then uh, we, take, um, we take some uh, traversable, again, list or something, of A. And we turn this into an A of a traversable of B. But there's quite a lot of thing, things going on here, and I warned you when I, in the beginning that, that just going straight on the straight on the on the um, uh, on the type uh, definition of this thing can sort of make your head spin. But this is quite actually simple. What is going on? Remember that this is a functor. So, so, so it has a map function. And that means that if I do map this function onto that thing, so I'm just doing a normal map. So I just take this function f here, and this is my x, and I just say map f of x, this will produce a p of a of b. Yes? So I have a list. This produces options. I map over, I get the list of options. And now you see that what remains of this thing here is just sequence. So we can just use the fact that we can map and sequence and now we have imp implemented traversable. So we don't actually have to implement traverse. We can just uh, do, we can just say, well, Traverse is traverse is defined as uh, map f compose with sequence. That's pretty cool. Now you can start seeing some of the power of these of these. Um, uh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful abstractions. But we can also do it the other way around. I could just say, well, okay, let, let's just change this uh, sequence here so that we implement, we implement traverse instead. Okay, so I'm going to say let rec traverse. And then I'm going to have some f which is going to be from A to some to A to option A and then an X which is going to be a list of these things and I can map all of this stays the same the only thing I have to go down here and change is that I will now have this F now I apply F to H and I apply traverse F applied to T. And that's it. That was, that was all I had to do really to, to, to implement traverse. Now, I've implemented traverse. Now I can implement sequence in, in terms of traverse. So now I can say sequence sequence equals traverse and now we need a function now we need a function which can of this sort and we have one it's pure so here is sequence implemented in terms of traverse so you just have to implement either or of these. 
Now, every monad is also an applicative. That's just the mathematics of it. Which means that whenever you have a monad, you can, you can also just use traverse and sequence on them. Um, but sometimes you actually want to capture the monadic effects. And, and it's, it's quite simple to follow exactly the same scheme. And instead of using, using the, the apply function here, um, you have to tune, tune, tweak things a little bit. But um, you can use the, the bind operator or the shove flat map instead of apply to make this work for, for uh, monads as well. Then traverse is usually called map. M and actually this sequence is usually called sequence A to say that sequence applicative and sequence is reserved for monads but yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and um, I leave that as an exercise uh, to you to implement traverse and sequence for for monads it's not really hard you just have to focus a bit think a bit about type signatures and it will fall out more or less uh, by itself. So, these things occur a lot when we start looking for them because most of the, the container structures that we have are both, both actually uh, traversable and applicative. So, 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 so whenever we have a container, there's uh, basically, there's always this possibility that this thing occurs. Right, so to conclude this, um, of course it's fun to implement these things uh, yourself. Good exercise, uh, stretches your brain uh, and flexes your functional programming muscles. But some good people have already done this. Not, nothing of this is actually in the standard library. But there is a beautiful library called F sharp plus, which I highly recommend that whenever you start an F sharp project, the first thing you do is add F sharp plus to the list of, of dependencies for, for that project so you can use it. There's a ton of good stuff in here. Um, there are monoids. There are applicatives. There are um, um, traversables, <clears throat> of course. And there are more stuff for monads. And there are lenses. Now, I haven't talked about lenses, uh, and I had kind of planned to do so, but decided not to do it. So, lenses are a special case of something called optics and optics are super useful in, in uh, pure functional programming it's essentially getters and setters supercharged um, in a composable form for, for functional programming uh, the reason I don't want to talk about them is partly due to time Partly because it's, it's kind of an advanced subject. They're easy enough to use, but once you start digging into the mathematics and the structure of lenses and try to understand them, it, it's, a, it's a rather deep rabbit hole to go down into. It involves, uh, um, there are many ways of doing them, but it involves stuff like profunctors and contravariant functors and all kinds of things, which is sort of outside of the scope of this, um, this course. But if you find these things interesting and like them, please learn. First learn how to use lenses and then uh, go in and look how they are implemented and how, how, how they work. It's a fascinating and beautiful piece of, of uh, computer science and, and mathematics. So, with this I think we are pretty much ready with, uh, uh, done with, with the abstractions we need. And now we're going to start applying things. Um, in the coming lectures, we will look at a few examples of special cases. We will look at the, the reader monad in the next lecture. Uh, we're going to start looking at continuation passing, which again, we'll, we will see how that fits into suddenly this uh, uh, abstraction. 
set of abstractions uh, which, and, the, and the continuation passing then leads us to async computations and from there we move on to the really practical stuff with client server web app uh, programming and uh, things like that. So there's going to be a couple of fairly sort of still kind of theoretical uh, lectures and after that we're going to go purely practical the rest of the course. All right, so that was that.